Oh, hello everyone and welcome to the Help Desk presented by Integris. I'm Scott Prime and we have the pleasure today of Jared Nolan, who is the CEO of Norman and Young, a full service real estate media company. And we thank him for his time on this and a special shout to uh, Brad Bethune, who is one of our account executives out of our Dallas Fort Worth area. So thank you to him and thank you to you, Jared. I appreciate the time. Why don't you just start by telling us a little bit about you, uh, who you are, where you come from, and then we'll get into what is going on at Norman and Young. Awesome. Thank y'all so much for having me. So I am, I was born in Würzburg, Germany. I was to a military family. We ended up bouncing around a little while till we ended up in uh, San Antonio, Texas for a little bit. From there, we moved on to Cleburne, a uh, little town about 45 minutes south of Fort Worth. And that's where I grew up. I've had tons of jobs. Uh, my probably most fun one was loss prevention with Alert for a while. Um, oh, wow. And then I somehow, my brother worked for Nolan Young as a photographer, got me on. And then a year later, me and my wife had our first kid and I came back from paternity to leave and uh, was offered the CEO position. Um, never felt so underqualified and excited at the same time. <laughs> it's sometimes the best way to do it though. That, oh, yeah. that is, that had to be a, a wild ride. The big question here can lead us into really what you do and what Norman and Young does is marketing in real estate and how that's changing. What's some of the factors that are driving that change and, and then how the industry is adapting to it. So feel free to enlighten us. <laughs> so Norman and Young uh, started probably seven or eight years ago, way before I was here in the town called Granbury here in Texas. A whole lot, of, most real estate listings were done on people's phones or just dinky right. cameras. So the owner actually started for his mom, took a real estate listing for one of her friends. And then it just naturally grew from there. He brought his brother on, um, brought a couple other people on, my brother, and it just, it naturally grew from there. And it's funny because it's actually, it's cool to see how a company like ours, if we change something, we force the competition to have to change with us and the whole market changes. It went from phone pictures to professional real estate photos. And even then we've switched from, uh, an HDR bracketing mode to, we call it hand blend now, where we actually pull window views through without having to take three hours on site, do a flash photography and bring lights in and stuff. Oh, wow. um, okay. Yeah. We just shoot three different brackets. One that's really dark. We pull the windows through. It takes a lot more time, but it, the quality is night and day. And, and we've watched how that slowly that's become the market standard now. And I think a lot of what drives it is a lot of competition, especially this past year. It's been insane how many people are moving, how many listings are going up and how fast they're selling. It's finally hmm. starting to cool off a little bit, but competition between, even between realtors has become you know, so much more. People are having to, the better photos they can get. The better videos they can get, the more they can post out on social media. It's become a whole different market than it was three or four years ago. Yeah, I guess with that said, and it seems like the answer is, is pretty straightforward and simple, but how important are really good pictures and video? And I was on your site and even the 3D tour, how important is that to real estate agents? And what have you, one, either heard from them as far as how that's going or what more could they want to make things even better on that side? So I, I think a, a big part of it is our attention spans will last very long. Even looking through Zillow, I'm guilty of it. And that might be because I'm a photographer. My wife's a, a Zillow now. She'll send me a house and I'll be like, these pictures are awful. I, I don't even want to buy a house. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And the more, like I said, the more that becomes the market standard of better photos, the harder it's going to be to keep people's attention. If you have those, you know, gross windows you can't see through. The more you can grab people's attention, and, and especially with 3D tours, videos, stuff like that, stuff that you can post out, it saves people from having to actually go to the house. They get a really good idea of what it is. And all of that is meant to make them want to go. I actually want to see this house in person, look at it, and maybe even make an offer on it. Hmm. So I probably should have asked this right off the bat, but I think you said it in something you had said earlier. Were you always into photography? Did you get into that? No, <laughs> I really was. Okay. I had never took a camera other than my phone before I worked for Nolan Young. Uh, that's kind of one of the things. Okay. You don't have to be a professional photographer to work for us. We do all the training and we're a little bit more picky on who we do hire because of that. You have to have an eye for what people are looking for. Sure. But several of our best photographers have been people with zero experience. And a lot of that's just no bad habits to train out. We can train them exactly how it needs to be. But yeah, I, mean, I had zero photography experience. I'm just, I'm one of those people that I get a job and I like to know every aspect of it. So right. I, I've taught myself Photoshop, Lightroom. I can edit videos. I can do anybody's job in the company. <laughs> 
That's wow, that's fantastic. And I, you know, I think we're all nerds in one way or another to certain things. Um, so I'm sure getting into it is it, probably a little daunting and overwhelming because I've done a little bit of work just on some of these podcasts. And if it's not Garage Band or iMovie or things like that, <laughs> it, it gets really technical. But I think that leads into Obviously, your website has photos and videos on there, but what about the role of social media? Obviously, it's blown up in every industry and every aspect, but what have you seen specifically on the real estate side, or what are you guys doing that's maybe a little different than anybody else? Most recently, um, TikToks and mostly Reels and Instagram and Facebook. Talk's not really a driving thing for real estate yet, but for Instagram and Facebook, that's things that realtors are already using. And we had the idea for it and we started shooting a couple of test ones for some builders in the area and it, it blew up. I think our first one had 8,000 views in the first day for a builder and they absolutely love it. It gets them a lot of views, but it also gets them a lot of traction with clients being able to right. see the house. It's faster than a normal video. So people are more likely to watch it through to the end and it focuses more on highlights than a normal real estate video. Usually right. we're, we're worried about wide angle. We want to show the whole room, make it feel big, make it look big. Uh, the reels and stuff is a little bit more fast paced. You get a quick glimpse of how big the room is, and then you get to go into the, what kind of sinks in there? What kind of range is in there? The hmm. uh, borders on the doors and stuff like that. Stuff that the builders actually think about a lot. In real estate agency, it gets them tons of views, which is something they're looking for, especially as the market becomes more competitive. Yeah. Do you think, or what do you think if you had to give the breakdown of people, are, are they, do they mostly want those short little clips or do they want some more in depth? I guess, you know, it depends on where you are in the process. Got to be attracted to the property first and you probably want to know more about it, but. I see more of the real estate videos are more to sell the house. That's more what people want to see if they're actually looking to buy the house. The reels, TikToks and things like that are more just to get views all of them basically some are closing okay so after the house is already sold just so people can see oh this is the kind of houses i sell this is the kind of work i put into selling the house i get right. videos i get drones i get photos you know, i get everything so if somebody's looking to sell their house they're like okay you put a lot of work into this you like to market it you want to get my house sold it's important to you so it can even potentially get them leads yeah i know it's two years now or whatever it's been but what effect it did you see the pandemic have on not only what you're doing but i guess we've all heard the real estate market's crazy but i think it's always crazy it just it's <laughs> cyclical it depends on what year you're in you're always something different but did you see anything specifically come from that very much so in the very beginning of it when it first hit i was still a photographer i remember being when dallas was locked down we were still considered we were contracted for multi-family which was considered essential it's almost a fever dream to think back of driving on a Dallas highway and being the only car there in the middle of the day. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, no, absolutely. We were getting ready to furlough. How is this going to affect us? It ended up, it was really good for our business. We did a lot of 3D tours, became almost every shoot. We were driving to Oklahoma. We were driving to Austin three, five hours away because people didn't want to go inside houses. They wanted 3D tours. They wanted videos. They wanted to show the house as much as they could without actually putting somebody in it. I don't know. Which is, which is kind of stuck. I think a lot of people have gotten used to the less contact. So 3D tours have stayed pretty popular. Videos have gotten mm. a lot more popular because they want people to see it as much as possible before they actually get into the house. Yeah. And yeah, it, it, we were having, especially after COVID with how many people have moved to Texas six to eight months ago, we we're having houses sell before we can even get the pictures back to them. It only takes us a day to get the pictures. Wow. Yeah. They were just selling so fast. So yeah, it shifted the market a little bit that way. Like I said, it's starting to cool down now. Um, less houses on the market, but they're not selling quite as fast. It's gone from a day or two to maybe a week or two. So it's been a train ride for all of us. <laughs> been a roller coaster for sure. Yeah. So I, I mentioned earlier, looking at your website, one of the things that there's some nice synergy with how Integris operates and feels as a company, but customer service, just looking at your site, you can tell it. That is a main focus and you, like anybody, you want to make your customers happy. But I think when you put it out there right off the bat, it's, that's an expectation, obviously. So yeah, absolutely. is there something that you all as a core believe as a company feel is important when it comes to customer service, whether that's process or procedures or whatever, but, um, what has worked for you the most? We just, anything we can do to make the clients happy, our loose motto is if you need it, we'll make it happen. So it, we don't charge cancellation fees until things happen. We don't want to put that burden on the realtor. You got to pay for a sheet that never happens. Right. 
the house goes under or the listing falls under the day of the shooting, nothing happens to them. But we just started to let our photographers know, make sure the clients are happy. If you show up to a house and it's going to take you 20 minutes to move things around, go for it within reason because we do have a pretty tight schedule most of the time. But we try to be on time as much as we can. If not, we try to let people know. Communication is a big thing with us. Um, rather you know something has gone wrong and you find out something has gone wrong, especially if we can already have a plan of action to fix it before we even get to you. But that's one of our big things. And it's been some growing pains as we've gotten bigger. And, and it's, we're still in the process of growing. We've gone from four or five photographers to we have 10 out in the field right now. Um, wow. So it's a little bit of growing pain, especially as we get more clients, but anything we can do to make it right is our thing. I like it. I also like the transparency. You've got pricing on the different things you can do right there on the site. I'm sure things change and there's ranges, but like I said before, putting all that out up front, I think says a lot about a company and, that's, and holding you to it. That's my big thing with us. It drives me nuts when I look at another photographer's site and I'm like, how much is it? I don't want to right. sign into your site and sign on for emails to come through my email all the time. And if I get in and it's going to be twice as expensive for everybody else, I'm not going to end up using it. So we, yeah, we try to be very transparent and anything you can do, you can call us and ask us, even if it's midnight on a Sunday, send us a Facebook message, it comes straight to my phone. Try to always be available to fix anything. I mean, our, our, our editor in the next office over, but if he's at home, we bring our laptops with us everywhere. So I do yeah. to get things fixed pretty quick. Nice. And this will be a multi-faceted, I guess is the best way to phrase it question, but drones. So I, I'll put it out there right off the bat. Growing up, I always wanted a remote control airplane, never got one. Now that drones have been around for a long time and it's easy. I went on Amazon probably a couple months ago, got one for 160, 170 bucks, something like that. A couple of days of good flying. Went a little too far once and it just disappeared. Like it was supposed to return to home. And I think... And we had talked right before the show about this too. I think maybe it was trying to return home and it just couldn't get past like some 60 foot trees. But that I come back from that in saying that one, drones are just amazing and fantastic, but two, love to know your background, but then three, how you're using them. Cause you know, drone shots, not aerial drones, those kind of things. When you have a really good drone and a great camera, it's cinematic. It's just like a movie. Yeah, so it's something I had no experience with beforehand. We did a short little training thing, but honestly, the newer ones, they're pretty easy to fly, especially once you get the yeah. $1,200 range. They have sensors and all that. So we require it for our photographers. You have to get your Part 107 license first or certification to do commercial. And then we train them. Okay. So we'll bring you out to a field, let you fly around and show <laughs> the of it. But especially in like Brandberry, where we started, it, it's something that's almost essential to it. They're right next to a huge lake and there's a lot of land, a lot of empty space where ground photos just don't do it justice. So it, it's it's very essential. All of our videos include drone shots so we can show what's around it, show what it's near. And it's just something cool. It's something that not everybody can do. Right. And it adds value to the realtors and adds value to us. Um, we're, <laughs> they just dropped a new... Uh, they're called FPV drones where you wear goggles and do the flips and all that. Something I'm considering trying. We tried it a year ago and it, it's very difficult. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sure. Yeah, flying the standard drone is super easy. The FPV drones are a whole other ballgame. So it's something we're going to probably revisit just to, even for TikToks or Reels, it, it could be a right. really cool video, get a lot of views. So that's something we're exploring. Yeah, and I think what you said, and, and maybe this is just me, but... Just getting that shot, especially on the real estate side, to see not only the house, like an aerial view, that's great. We always, I think my grandparents had pictures of their house taken from a plane, but when you see it in the live action situation and what's around it, like you said, if there's a lake somewhere nearby, or if there's great woods, open land, I can't imagine that does anything but help in real estate to <laughs> see what you're buying and what's around you. Even middle of Dallas or Fort Worth, you can get a picture with the house in the corner and you can show the shopping center that's, you know, mm -hmm. all that, or you can show everything that it's near. And it really saves, especially on the realtors, and it saves a lot of back end having to go into the description, explain everything. So it adds a ton of value to realtors. And even for ones that are selling, they're just lots. It used to be you just show a survey and then you have some ground pictures, but now we can actually get up above it and show how big the lot is in relation, what's on the ground, how much streets are around it. Um, so yeah, it helps out a ton. And are, I know you said you train people, but I'm guessing you like getting out there and 
and fly in the drum. <laughs> I, I miss being a photographer a lot of the time. There's a lot of driving, but a lot of podcasts, a lot of, you know, audio books. And for the other, I get to take breathe. We've seen some amazing cows. Yeah, I'm sure you missed that, but uh, this kind of leads me into my next question. <laughs> Being the CEO, you might have some other things on your plate oh, yeah. that are <laughs> take up some time. Where where do you see Norman Young going in the next five years? What are you looking forward to? Uh, next five years? So I, I'm, it's been on my bucket list for a while. I think we're probably going to start expanding. Um, it's just difficult to send a people out to train and start maybe pushing a little bit more north than Oklahoma, push a little bit more east, and then maybe even push closer to Austin. Just got to set up the right structures for my trainers to get down there and be able to be down there long enough to train the photographers all the way through. But yeah, definitely we're thinking about growing, adding services. We've got some big things in the works right now that I can't talk about yet. But... <laughs> Yeah, we got some things coming. I think we're super excited for just expanding kind of our arsenal of things. We try to be a one-stop shop for realtors. Fantastic. Yeah, so Norman and and A-N-D young.com is the website. So I'll throw that out there. Uh, now the really fun part. This is where I get to ask you a couple off the wall kind of questions. And I'll give you a choice because I don't want to pigeonhole anybody. <laughs> so I guess the first one for you would be, uh, and it's only, who knows when this will come out in the next few weeks but it's a wednesday but any big plans for the weekend what do you like to do on the weekends um i have a four month old so did when we can do okay <laughs> we like to go to this or just go to the park keep the kids entertained get them tired and watch some tv shows we just finished better call saul which was super sad oh, perfect yeah, m mostly relax. Me and my wife are on opposite. She stays at home with the kids. So on the weekend, she's ready to go out and do stuff. And I'm at work, so I'm ready to go home and chill. So we do a nice balance of both. Maybe go to the zoo and they come home watching TV and read. We appreciate the time. And thank you very much for letting us know a little bit about you and then more about Norman and Young and what you're doing. I find every time I do one of these, it's fascinating because it, there's just so much out there. So... It's incredible and best of luck with everything in the future and where you all go. But we very much appreciate the time and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's been fun. All right. Have a great rest of your week and weekend. You too. Thank, thank you, sir. You.